Hello my YouTube friends, I hope you're doing awesome today. I've done a few videos on streaming to multiple platforms at the same time using Restream.io and Caster.io, but today I'm gonna show you how you can do it directly in OBS. Oh, and it's totally free. So let's get to it. My analytics say that 80% of the folks watching my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? If so, let me know in the comments down below. But if you are looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. It's totally free. Multi-streaming can be an effective way to grow an audience on more than one platform at the same time. And the method I'm gonna show you today is totally free and gives you a lot of control over each individual location that you're streaming to. Of course, it also has its drawbacks, so let's hop into it and I'll show you how it works. The link is in the description for this page. It is the actual plugin that's going to set this up on your OBS. You can see it works for Windows and Mac and we're gonna click go to the dashboard and you have two packages here, a zip package for Windows and a PKG file for Mac. Just click the appropriate one for your particular setup and I'm gonna double click it and open it up. You can see it's an executable so I just run it and make sure that it's installing to the proper directory, your OBS studio directory. You just click install and there you go. You're going to have this installed on your computer. So now we're gonna go into OBS and if you click view and go to docs, you can select multiple output and it'll put it in your browser docs here. And it may actually already be in there when you install it, it may not. So now you know how to put it in there. And of course you can grab it and move it around to any location in OBS that you want. So there we go, now we have it installed. If we go into settings and we go to stream, you can see that you're going to wanna set up whatever your first priority stream is. In my case, it's YouTube. And so I already have that set up and it's automatically going to go to that stream. Now if I go into output I can see how my stream is currently set up and this is going to be the bottom end of what our stream is going to turn out to be. So in other words anything that you stream to additionally is going to add on to that bit rate and you're going to want to keep that in mind because if you have a connection that's not very fast well you're probably struggling to stream to one location. You're just not going to be able to stream to multiple locations. Usually a good rule of thumb is that you want your total bit rate for all the live streams that you're producing. So if we're going to YouTube and Facebook and we're using a 6,500 kilobits per second for YouTube and we're using a 4,000 kilobits per second going out to Facebook, when you add those two together, you want those to add up to less than half of your upload rate for your internet connection. So if it isn't, you're gonna wanna do extensive testing to make sure that your upload can actually handle it. But a good rule of thumb is that you want your upload rate to be double what the total bit rate is for all the live streams that you're trying to put out. So just keep that in mind as we go along. When we go into video, we can see our base canvas here for our YouTube live stream is 1920 by 1080. And you're gonna wanna keep that in mind because if you're streaming to something like Facebook, well, it's maximum resolution resolution is 720, which means that you're either going to have to change your YouTube resolution to 720, or you're going to stream at two different resolutions, which means your machine is going to have to encode two different streams. And if your machine is not great, or maybe even on the older side, this is not likely going to happen. So if you're going to stream to Facebook and YouTube, the ideal situation would be probably for you to scale down your YouTube live stream to 720 in order to not have to encode two different live streams. So you're just going to want to keep that in mind. And I'll get to that when I show you exactly how this is done. But we have our initial stream set up. Now we can go in here and we can add a new target. And let's say we wanted to live stream to Twitch. We just type in the name of the streaming service we want to use. And we pop over into Twitch. We're going to go into our channel and then settings and we wanna select channel and videos, and then we're gonna select stream. We're gonna copy out our stream key, and then if we go over here, and I'll leave this in the actual description, a link to this, this is the RMTP servers for Twitch. You're just gonna select the one that's closest to your house, and we're gonna just grab this right here, 
copy it out. We're gonna paste it into the RTMP server and we're gonna just remove this stream key piece because obviously this is set up so we add it into a special location. Now we can select the encoder. Now if you decide to select a different encoder than get from OBS, it's going to encode a completely separate stream. You can put in your custom resolution here and your bit rate and everything else for where you're gonna go. But ideally you want to get this from OBS. You really want to make sure that all of your streams are the same resolution and the same size, especially if you're dealing with a machine that's not great. Let me show you how to set up Facebook here. We just type in the name Facebook. We go over to Facebook. We go to live video that's on our main page. We're going to go ahead and go to use stream key and we're going to copy out our server URL and stick that in here. And we're going to get our stream key. I'm gonna copy that from right here. And in this case, we know we're streaming to YouTube at 1080 and to Twitch at 1080, but we can't stream to Facebook at 1080. It's max resolution is 720. So we're going to essentially be encoding a whole nother stream to send it out to Facebook. And if your machine can handle it, fantastic. Just keep in mind that we're not just dealing with what your machine can handle, but also what your connection can handle. You can see that the bit rate there is something that you can set and just keep in mind that each of those bit rates adds on top of the other one. So keep in mind that 50% rule where you want your total bit rate added up to be less than half of what your actual connection is capable of handling unless you're going to spend hours and hours and hours doing a lot of testing to make sure that everything works the way it should. So if you're going to stream to Facebook and YouTube and Twitch, the easiest solution is just to scale your stream to 720 for everything. And that's going to give you the best chance of having a quality stream across every one of those platforms. Now, if you have a good machine, you can certainly try to stream at two separate resolutions, one for Twitch and YouTube and one for Facebook. But again, I would do a lot of testing just to check it out. Every YouTube viewer has a superpower. That's right. Your superpower is the ability to supercharge any video. And it's really simple to do. You just click that little thumbs up right down there. It's totally free and what it does is it tells YouTube to share this video out to a wider audience. It really does help me out and it makes my cat Dusty really happy too. Thanks a bunch. So here's where you put in your resolution and you make sure that you set your bit rate up and there we go. Now just in case you don't know where to get your stream keys and stuff from YouTube, you just go into your main page and then if you go live, it brings you right to this page where you have your stream key and your RTMP right here. You just copy those out and paste them into your output as well if it's not set up as your main stream. So once you're ready to live stream, you go down and you click in the bottom right, start streaming, and that starts off your main stream. And then you can go ahead and kick off the multiple output streams by clicking start up here in the top left. Now you just need to keep in mind that each one of these streaming services has a different process on their end that you may have to use. So if you click start streaming for YouTube, it's automatically going to just start streaming. Whereas if you click the start on the Facebook one, you do have to flip over into Facebook and click go live once it starts to receive the data signal in order to go live. So just keep that in mind. You do have to go through that process on the different platforms. Now for Windows, we're gonna wanna right click in our taskbar and go to task manager and we can go to performance. We can see where our CPU is at to see if it's handling things. And we can go down here and check our ethernet connection to see how we're keeping up with the live stream. And you're definitely going to wanna test this before you actually go live to the public. So set up unpublic live streams and test them to make sure that you can actually stream to multiple platforms. If we go into view and we go to stats, we bring up our stats doc, which I've done videos on in the past. This is only going to show you the actual results of the initial stream, the one that you have set up under settings. It's not going to add on the rest of those outputs. That all happens through the plugin. 
Yeah, this one right here. So you're gonna have to use your task manager information for your CPU and your ethernet connection to determine whether you're actually streaming in the proper way and you're getting a good quality stream or whether it's dropping all over the place. The stats box really isn't gonna help you much here. You can definitely see that you're gonna need a solid connection to do this. I mean, you're not just sending out one live stream now, you're sending out multiples. And you're also going to need a solid machine if you're gonna do any rescaling or extra encoding. So if you're using a Mac, I would just use a service like Restream or Caster. In my experience, Macs struggle to encode one stream and they're gonna produce even worse results with more than one at the same time. Now, I will admit I haven't tested an M1 Mac yet, so you could give it a try, but I would set your expectations relatively low, to be perfectly honest with you. If you're having issues with your live stream and you wanna see how to fix the most common ones, check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.